Welcome to Chemical Branch AI. Today's topic is the Solvay process for the manufacture of soda ash. In this video, we will explore the flow sheet diagram to understand how the Solvay process is used to produce sodium carbonate in the industry. We will cover various aspects of the process. So let's get started. First of all, we will know what is soda ash. Soda ash, also known as sodium carbonate, is a white crystalline powder that is commonly used in various industries and applications. It is an important chemical compound with a wide range of uses due to its versatile properties. It has a molecular weight of 106.00 grams per mole. Its melting point is approximately 851 degrees Celsius, and it decomposes at higher temperatures, around 1600 degrees Celsius. This decomposition results in the release of carbon dioxide gas, and soda ash is used in making chemicals, in soaps and detergents, in pulp and paper, in glass, in sodium silicate, and in miscellaneous ETC. Soda ash in the industry is produced through the Solvay process method, wherein the following reactions occur. If you are unable to recall all of these reactions, you can note down the overall reaction. To produce soda ash, the primary ingredients required are salt, coal, limestone, and ammonia. Now we will know what equipments are used when soda ash is manufactured by Solvay process, and then after that we will understand its working process step by step. So let's start. It is called an air pump, which is used to pump air through it. Additionally, there is a lime kiln, a type of furnace, where calcium carbonate is decomposed, and carbon and oxygen react with each other. It is called a slaker, which is a reactor where calcium oxide reacts with water. These towers, known as the tower series, are used for the washing and cleaning of the brine solution. During this process, ammonia and carbon dioxide are employed to remove sludge containing calcium, magnesium, and iron. This is called an ammoniation tower, where ammonia is dissolved in a solution. In this process, washing is performed using the tower by dissolving ammonia in a brine solution, and some carbon dioxide is also dissolved. Heat is also released during this process. This is called a carbonating tower, primarily used for the cleaning process. Its diameter can range from 1.8 to 2.5 meters, and its height can be approximately 22 to 25 meters. The tower is made of cast iron. The temperature in its top and bottom sections ranges from 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, while in the middle, it ranges from 45 to 55 degrees Celsius. Cooling water is supplied from an external source to maintain the temperature and facilitate the process. This tower is divided into multiple sections where different processes take place. In the production of soda ash, there are mainly three reactions that occur inside it. The first reaction involves the reaction between carbon dioxide and hydroxide. In the second reaction, carbon dioxide and water react with each other. In the third reaction, sodium, chlorine, ammonium icons, and bicarbonate react with each other. This is called a rotary filter press or a rotary drum filter, and it is used to separate insoluble substances from a slurry. In this process, sodium bicarbonate is separated from the slurry using the rotary filter press. This is called a calciner. It can be a type of gas-fired or steam-heated unit, through which the process of calcination takes place. Calcination is a thermal process that involves the heating of a substance at high temperatures, typically in the range of 100 to 1200 degrees Celsius. During calcination, the substance undergoes various chemical and physical changes, such as the removal of volatile components, the decomposition of compounds, or the transformation of materials into more stable forms. In this process, the temperature inside the calciner remains at 200 degrees Celsius. Achieved by using fuel air to raise the temperature, sodium bicarbonate undergoes thermal treatment in the calciner, leading to the removal of volatile compounds and the formation of soda ash. This is called a water cooler, and it is used to produce a dense grade of soda ash and monohydrate, both of which are used in the glass industry. In this process, water is mixed with soda ash obtained from the calciner, and the mixture is then recalcined. And both of these are types of ammonia still tankers. In this process, the ammonia obtained from them is recycled. We will learn more about their working processes later. For now, let me tell you that one is called a free ammonia still, which has a steam heated reboiler used for distillation. The other is called a combined ammonia still, which is connected to the free ammonia still. Inside it, calcium hydroxide and ammonium chloride react with each other. And there are two important components involved in the process. 
A condenser and a compressor. The condenser is responsible for the process of condensation, which helps maintain the temperature during process. On the other hand, the compressor is used to compress carbon dioxide in the process. Now, we will understand its working process with a step-by-step -step flowchart diagram. First of all, coke and limestone are sent to the lime kiln, and air is pumped through an air pump. In the lime kiln, two main reactions take place. In the first reaction, calcium carbonate decomposes into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. In the second reaction, carbon reacts with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide gas. The calcium oxide produced in the kiln passes through the bottom section and is sent to the slaker. In the slaker, the calcium oxide reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide, also known as milk of lime. Finally, the calcium hydroxide is sent to still tankers for further processing, while the carbon dioxide is passed on to the next process. While the lime kiln is processing, a brine solution is introduced into the top section of the ammoniation tower, and ammonia is added from the bottom section. The main purpose here is to carry out the washing process, wherein ammonia dissolves in the brine solution. Two primary reactions occur. Firstly, ammonia gas reacts with water to form ammonium hydroxide, and secondly, carbon dioxide gas, which comes from the lime kiln, reacts with the hydroxide to produce a bicarbonate solution. Gaseous carbon dioxide and dinitrogen are removed from the top section of the tower and can be utilized to purify the brine. The temperature of the resulting solution from the bottom section is lowered to 30 degrees Celsius before being transferred to the carbonating tower. In the carbonating tower, the cleaning process is primarily conducted in multiple steps. There are three main reactions taking place in different sections. Firstly, carbon dioxide from the lime kiln enters the tower under compression and reacts with hydroxide to form bicarbonate. Secondly, carbon dioxide reacts with water to produce bicarbonate and hydrogen. Lastly, sodium, chlorine, ammonium icons, and bicarbonate undergo a reaction to yield ammonium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. The cooling water is supplied to the process from the top section, and any unreacted carbon dioxide gas is released from the top section as well. Ammonium chloride and sodium bicarbonate, in the form of a slurry mixture, are discharged from the bottom section of the tower and transferred to the rotary filter press. The sodium bicarbonate precipitate present in the slurry mixer is separated from the ammonium chloride using a rotary filter. This process allows us to obtain solid sodium bicarbonate, which is then sent to the calcina. The process of calcination takes place in the calcina, where thermal treatment of sodium bicarbonate occurs using fuel air. Sodium bicarbonate is heated to a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius, causing it to decompose into sodium carbonate, commonly known as soda ash, carbon dioxide, and water, which turns into steam. The soda ash obtained from the calcina is known as light soda ash. To obtain dense grade soda ash, the light soda ash is sent to a water cooler, where it is mixed with water. The resulting product is then referred to as dense soda ash. In the calcina, when the cancellation process occurs, sodium bicarbonate decomposes, resulting in the formation of sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide, and water. The carbon dioxide produced in this step is then condensed through the condenser and subsequently directed from the compressor to the carbonating tower. The filtrate liquor obtained from the rotary filter is sent to a free ammonia still, where a distillation process is conducted using a steam heated reboiler. This process separates ammonia gas from the liquor, which is then recycled. The remaining liquor in the free ammonia still, containing ammonium chloride from the bottom section, is transferred to another ammonia still where calcium hydroxide is already present. In this step, ammonium chloride reacts with calcium hydroxide, resulting in the formation of calcium chloride and water. While ammonia is released, the recovered ammonia from the top is further recycled, and the remaining solution is recovered from the bottom. The carbon dioxide obtained from the carbonating tower is sent to the ammoniation tower, which is also part of the recycling process. Finally, it should be noted that any excess or generated ammonia throughout the process is stored in an ammonia tank for recycling or other industrial processes.